But the good news is you guys already know the basics of how we're going to simulate this, which is essentially uh, go in here, right click our plane, bullet tags. We're going to make that a collider body. Again, a body that sits there and just is going to have other objects interact on it. In this case, a floor. Uh, for our head, we're going to right click this one, say bullet tags, soft body. And then for Patrick, we're going to have Patrick fall on SpongeBob here. So we're going to alt click this uh, once to make sure he's visible. Again, right click him, bullet tag, and he's going to be a rigid body. He's going to be the bowling ball of the scene. So with Patrick selected, we can hit E and we'll raise him up and maybe rotate him around. And again, he can just fall onto SpongeBob. We'll raise him up just a little bit higher. Now, when I'm running a simulation, I don't necessarily need to render that uh, in IPR or bucket. I can just pause it and see the results. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off so the simulation will run faster. And now if I go over here and cl click play, uh, you're going to see his face is going to fall through his body and then Patrick's going to fall on top of him. And that's uh, as expected because I forgot to go over here to body base, right click, and we'll go ahead and set this one as a collider body. So just like the floor, things are going to hit him or hit the body here uh, and treat it like it's just stone sitting there. So again, if I go ahead and run this, you're going to see Another thing I want to bring up is this head is sitting here on his body. And if I hit play, even before Patrick hits him, he starts jiggling around because he kind of settles into position because uh, he's floating just a slight bit uh, into the body. So I don't want that. So I'm going to hit shift F to back my animation frames back up to frame zero. Select his head. Go into dynamics body. Dynamics. Trigger. And instead of immediately, I'm going to say only on collision. So he's going to sit there frozen in time uh, until something interacts with him. And then he's going to trigger his dynamics on his head. So I'm going to go ahead and play this again. And then boom, Patrick will fall on him. And then he's going to kind of, eh, he'll kind of, I'm going to move this camera back here so we see. He'll kind of be on there and he kind of sticks to it a little bit. Blurp. There we go. And then he finally kind of falls off and rolls off. Um, and now again, at any point you can go in here and you can say, okay, Patrick, I need you to be, you know, maybe a little smaller so we can scale him down a little bit. You can rotate him so that, you know, maybe he kind of hits him at a funnier angle or he reacts a little bit differently, maybe a little belly flop on our object. So now when we hit play, he'll hit. Now, if I pause the simulation here and we hit go back to our IPR render. You can see that's the result we're getting. So again, we're deforming this low res mesh. It's simulating uh, how we would want. And then the render is showing us a much more uh, nice version with the displacement applied. Uh, again, for some reason, when I turn this off, sometimes it goes back into the render. So we have to go back in here and set up camera, but I'm gonna leave it on render so we can go in here and take a look at how things are looking. And he's actually pretty close. Again, you can hit control D to go into your project settings, bullet, expert change that collision margin if these there's too much padding in here but actually now that i mentioned that uh, one thing i do want to change let's hit shift f i'm going to rotate him around here because i think one thing i will have to change let's go ahead and turn off our ipr view here uh, so when you hit uh, play here yeah, so the the collision margin I think is okay. You know, it's it's basically these these objects are getting pretty dang close. Uh, but here it's not very close, and that's not a collision margin issue. If we go in here to our head soft body collision tab, you're going to see a uh, shape is set to automatic. Let's set this shape to moving mesh, and then up here on Patrick as well. Click on his uh, dynamics body, go down here to shape, and set that to moving mesh. So now if I hit Shift F and we run that simulation again. It's much more, uh, it's taking into account the shape of the body, which is fairly complex. It's not taking like a bounding box or a simplified version of this shape. It's taking the actual shape of the mesh and that's what's deforming here. Uh, so again, if we zoom in here and do our IP render, IPR render, uh, it's deforming as expected. So that's about it. So we can go back in here, we can turn off our IPR render, we can hit Shift F, uh, we can drop all sorts of things on here, see how they behave, go in there and change our settings. If you need more frames to see how this plays out, uh, you can go to here to the lower right hand corner, set this to like 150. So now there's gonna be even more frames. Let's do Shift F and let this drop one more time. He'll bounce on there, bounce back up, flip off, drop the head down and fall on the ground. And again, while it's doing all this, if you go in here and were to render this out as an animation, uh, this is the result you would get. And again, to see that in action, uh, down here, that's the result you get. You get a nice rubber floppy kind of look, uh, whatever material you want to set up, everything's going to interact appropriately and it'll look like it's high res. When in reality, it's actually a very low res object. And of course, uh, with the head soft body selected, this is when you can go into your soft body settings here. And again, you can change the stiffness or the dampening or the damping uh, to make it more jiggly, 
more collapsible or increase things to make it more like a hard rubber. It kind of depends on the look you're going for. Uh, one thing you can change, we go up here uh, to Patrick. Uh, if we go over here to Mass, uh, he's using World Density right now. If we change this to Custom Density and crank this up to maybe five, we're making him a very heavy bowling ball. So we're basically putting a five multiplier on his uh, density here. So if we hit click play now, oops, let's go ahead and turn off our render view. And then again, click play. Boom, he's gonna hit him really hard and then roll off. So he's a very heavy object. Uh, there and in fact just because I'm curious I want to see how this render turned out <laughs> nice but anyway that's just another thing you can change in our case I'll probably turn this back to one seemed like plenty and uh, there you go so that's the basic setup of course if you want to uh, let's hit shift f one thing that might come up is you can kind of see how he kind of sticks to his base a little bit longer uh, some of that does have to do with, if we go in here to the head, I notice that the soft body, if I increase the structural a little bit and the stiffness a bit, that can alleviate some of that stickiness an object has. But another thing that makes it sticky is it might be interpenetrating with uh, a collider object. So in that case, what I might do is just move this up just a little bit and maybe scale him in just a bit so he's not really touching uh, anything in here and it's still set to uh, you know trigger on contact so when I click this now he might be less acceptable to kind of sticking to things you can see it kind of grabbed here a little bit so uh, tweak your settings to avoid some of that and of course if you did want to render you know all 150 frames we have here you'd have to go in here to your render settings uh, underneath output change your frame range from current frame over here to all frames uh, of course, if you at this point, if you want to change your, you know, 1920 by 1080 or whatever, you can change it here. And then we'll go in here to render, add to render queue. Go ahead and save our project. Again, let's throw that on our desktop. Uh, one thing you need to be careful of is the, what, what camera you have. It's got the default camera. We actually want the camera camera, wherever that's set up. And again, if you want to see that, make sure you, if you're, you know, have your IPR render going, go back here and camera. And okay, that's the view we want. If, if Patrick's showing up there a little bit, oh, let's go ahead and grab him and just move him up out of frame just a bit. And then you can go in here and you can hit play and that'll go ahead and save your frame sequence.